This is really an amazing piece of equipment. It's from the late 1970s and it weighs an absolute ton. I mean, when I got the Akai 4000DS, that was my first reel to reel. I thought, okay, that's, uh, that's pretty good quality. Then I got, uh, recently, I got the TAC A2300SX and I said, well, that is heavy. Now this one beats them all. This, this just weighs a ton and I really don't know how I managed to pull this out of the container and get it into the car, but I did it. It is in pretty rough shape. It does have a bunch of scratches, a bunch of dents, pretty dusty, pretty dirty, pretty filthy. It was owned by a smoker. Uh, tension arms are both bend. There it is. This was, I believe, I, I think it was a top of the line model from Sony. And I got it for free, so really I can't complain. Now, um, it is going to be quite a bit of work to get this into good condition again, uh, cosmetically. You can, you can kind of see it uh, uh, was hit by something right there. You might be able to kind of see the closed loop part. Uh, the letters are actually scraped off. It's uh, it's actually like a uh, it's kind of like a 3D, as you can see. And yep, that doesn't look all too nice either. Uh, have to see what I can do here. Head cover is present, which is always nice. Already found a bunch of uh, real to real decks where those were missing, which is always kind of annoying. Um, it is dual capstan, as you can see. Quite impressive. First thought it was auto reverse, but then I saw it's closed loop dual capstan, which is even more amazing. Um, now, the common problem with these reel to reels is that uh, the grease in the pinch roller mechanism gets hard, and then that just gets completely stuck. Now, uh, on here, in here, that uh, works completely. Oh, there we go. Works just perfectly. So it has been in service and uh, they took care of the problem. So you can see they uh, put, uh, they took the grease out and put uh, graphite oil into there. It is of course a three head machine. Bunch of features. It is, uh, this is also my first ten and a half inch uh, real size machine. I previously always had the, uh, the seven inch reels. Uh, has uh, seven and a half inches per second or three and three fourths. This is actually a mechanical switch. This one is, I guess, an electrical one. Has a pause right there, and uh, these switches here for all your standard functions: a monitor switch, playback, level control, power switch. And these view meters here. Gotta love those uh, those needles in there. These are record switches. Uh, those are bent uh, inwards towards this direction. Don't know what's up with that. There's a record timer lock, so you can lock those into the record position, and uh, then I guess turn off the machine and press play. And uh, once the timer turns it on, it all starts working. That's quite a clever setup. Uh, we have a tape selector, normal or high bias, and then an equalizer for normal, special and ferrochrome. Microphone jacks that even feature an attenuation uh, part. Minus 15 and minus 30 decibels. Level regulators. Pretty filthy those are. Sim phase. Three motor servo control. I just started cleaning this a little bit, just some very, very basic cleaning. So I went ahead and cleaned the top. Just the top. Wow, this <laughs> thing. And the top is still dirty. If you go over it with a wet towel, you'll still get this kind of a color. This is absolutely filthy. So today it's uh, time to go ahead and take it apart. Um, want to take the chassis out of the housing and well I guess we're then going to go from there. It uh, depends on what's going on inside. If there is something obviously wrong, um, I will have to uh, take care of that first, obviously. If everything appears to be alright, we're going to go ahead and give it a bit of a test run.
Problem being, uh, this uh, this is all set up in a way that you'll have to put it down onto the onto the face plate, onto the front, in order to get uh, the wooden case off. And there it is, lying on the floor, and there it is with the wooden case removed. And surprise, surprise, it is surprisingly clean inside of there. Also, looking at this a little bit closer, I couldn't find anything that was obviously wrong. There was some, something came off the motor, capstan motor. I uh, don't know if that's for shielding or if it's a label or what, but uh, it doesn't appear to be too terribly bad. Definitely hasn't shorted anything. Up here is the wooden case. As you can see, that has some quality going on. Some uh, nice carpeting there. Not the highest quality I've ever seen. The housing, the wooden case of the Toshiba PT884 is higher quality. There you can see Sony's good old original brand name for their tape recorders. It's a tape recorder. And here we are outside, and as you can see, I've taken the machine apart quite a bit further than I thought I would. But it definitely proved to be worthwhile. As you can see, I've taken off the whole entire upper front, and for as clean as the machine is on the back side, the front is really, really filthy. So happy that I did that, because I can now go ahead and clean it all out and just be done with it. There it is. Unfortunately, that didn't turn out as well as I thought it would. It is still pretty filthy inside. Most of the dust is gone, but uh, some of it is just really, really baked on, so only water and soap could take care of that. Uh, these parts up here are uh, unfortunately kind of rusty. I guess now I want to take another look, and uh, then we're going to try to power this thing up. It does seem to work, believe it or not. Um, when I turn it on, I get view meters. Those light up, as you can clearly see. Uh, the pause light is working as well. And uh, oh, the record lights are working too. Yep, they both light up. So, uh, all the lights are working. And, uh, well, all the functions appear to be working somewhat, too. I have not shown you that, but uh, you may have seen in one of the previous videos, the tension arms were just terribly bent. And, um, now, uh, good thing is, these are, whoops, these are blurry. Uh, these are made out of very soft metal, so I could bend them back. With, uh, without any problem. So those are back into the shape they should be in. So now I can actually go ahead and put on a tape and, uh, and test it for you. Well, some good news and some bad news. Good news is the mechanism basically seems to be working. Um, as you can see here is uh, fast forward. That works. Here is rewind, which is a bit noisy. I think this this motor is a bit noisy. Um, and uh, as you can see, the brakes are working fine as well, which kind of surprises me. And here is play. It works too on both speeds. Three and three fourths. And seven and a half. Bad news is it doesn't work uh, perfectly. Um, towards the end of the tape, uh, it won't play anymore. It uh, it just doesn't want to advance the tape. Like it was a terrible effort to do that. So I'll have to see what's up with that. Uh, maybe it's putting up too much uh, back tension or something like that. The worst thing is the amplifier appears to be completely dead. 
It, uh, it doesn't output anything. Not even a hiss, no crackle, no dirty switch noise. Not even the kind of typical back noise that we are that you're getting as soon as an amplifier is turned on. I can turn this uh, receiver here all the way up, and I'm not getting anything. And same as for the headphone output, there is plain nothing, both in record and playback mode. So, uh, well, if I'm lucky, it's just something wrong in the power supply, and maybe that's the thing that's smelling burned all the time. That would be the best solution. First of all, I downloaded the service manual. I found that online. Uh, it's uh, it's just amazing. The magic of the internet really helps with these old things. It's a service manual for the TC755, um, but it also applies for the TC755A. Apparently, the only differences between the non-A and the A version are, um, are some cosmetic changes. The first uh, problem I, uh, I started working on is uh, the fact that the amplifier is just completely dead. Um, as I found out, looking at the service manual, the amplifier is getting two supply voltages, and they're both rather odd voltages, should I say. It's running off of 27 volts and 24 volts. Since the amplifier must be dead, there's probably something wrong uh, with the power supply. Now the power supply is, uh, it's, uh, that's typical Sony, it's just a mess. This machine is just an absolute mess. I mean, look at that circuit board right there, with all the wires on it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's just wonderful working on these things. But uh, anyway, the power supply for the amplifier section is kind of merged into the uh, main control circuit board for all the mechanical functions, which really makes sense. It's buried in the middle of the circuit board with everything else just kind of around everything just kind of surrounding it you can see down there uh, the little hole uh, that's where the regulator for the 27 volt section is located now first of all I went ahead and started checking the 27 volt rail and uh, after I finally found out that I was uh, just all the time measuring the voltage across some wrong terminals, um, and after I finally went ahead and measured the voltage across the correct terminals, I did get the 27 volts. I went ahead and uh, had to play with the potentiometer down there to get it to an exact 27.0 volts. So that's all working fine. I already put this circuit board back in place and started thinking about what to do next because I had completely forgotten about the 24 volt rail. Now, um, the 24 volt rail is, uh, if I can just get that thing here uh, back into business. Okay, now here we have, uh, you can see the quality of this is not all too terribly good. Uh, you can see the 27 volt rail is right there. That's coming from uh, from somewhere up here. And um, it then goes over a resistor. The resistor does a little voltage drop. And uh, over this uh, 1000 microfarad capacitor, and then that's your 25 volt rail, uh, your 24 volt rail. So I said, OK, measure the voltage across that capacitor. And it was exactly zero volts. And after I double and triple checked that I was actually measuring across the correct terminals, <laughs> I said, well, the only thing that can be wrong, if we are getting the 27 volts right there and nothing there, is that resistor. And uh, yes, indeed, this resistor, it is a, what is that, uh, quarter of a watt? 4.7 ohms micron. That resistor is completely open. A quarter of a watt, 4.7 ohms. I think, let's double check that uh, with what's given in here. It is supposed to be half a watt, and unfortunately I can't read that number there. It's It looks like 91, but uh, I guess a 1 is a graphics error for the most part, and I don't know what that 9 is supposed to be. So, uh, well, I'm not really sure what to do about that. I guess I'm for right now, I'm just going to uh, try to uh, get this to work 
by hooking up an external power supply. So let's go ahead and do that. It's quite a bit later now and I have some good news as well as unfortunately some rather bad news. Now good news is I was right. That uh, stupid resistor right there is broken and uh, as you can see, I just soldered some, uh, I just temporarily soldered these uh, resistors to the leads of that 1000 microfarad filter capacitor so that I could hook up my, uh, my uh, power supply. And guess what? With the power supply up to 24 volts, the amplifier works and it seems to work completely. So, uh, yeah, what should I say? It could have been just one little resistor. But unfortunately, and that's that's the bad part, unfortunately something else happened. Now, I, I think I already mentioned, um, I put the circuit board back in its place in the chassis, and then I noticed I hadn't checked the 24 volt rail, and pulled it out again. There was a little event happening there that I thought was completely irrelevant. A little spark. This machine is just absolutely cramped and packed and this is this is a nightmare to work on. You you really gotta hate Sony for that. The circuit board is uh, is stuffed. You, you can't really say it's mounted. It's just stuffed into the chassis, and it's pretty much impossible to get it out of there without shorting the um, the circuit board to the mounting posts on which it's usually sitting on. Now, I'm always putting this paper in between, but uh, that time I. I wasn't ready for that, you know, I was fiddling around to get the paper into there, um, and that's what when it happened. Something up there shorted against the mounting point, little spark, and um, something must have uh, blown. Something is dead, something is not working, because, well, the amplifier is working, but now the mechanism has quit working. The function buttons like playback and rewind, the buttons will uh, stay in place and not pop out all the time and uh, the capstan motor is spinning and all of that. But when you press the buttons, um, playback and rewind and fast forward, it just doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. And, uh, you know, I mean, getting that power supply uh, up and running and uh, hooked up, that was 10 minutes. For the past two hours, I've... Uh, I've been messing around with uh, with that problem. I've been measuring tons and tons and tons of voltages on the circuit board. And uh, some voltages are dropping when they shouldn't do it, I believe. Uh, other voltages don't read what they should be. I really don't have much luck with Sony equipment. Eh, you know, I... I had that feeling right from the start when I... When I uh, start working on this machine, that's not going to work because it's a Sony. Unfortunately, I was unable to repair the problem that I had caused. Though I will have to admit, after this video, I never really tried to do that again. The machine ended up on eBay, I sold it, and hopefully, at this point, somebody else has successfully repaired the problems and it's now working again. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.